You gave my life to me, set me free, set me free. How can, here's Nicodemus's response, how can someone be born when they're old? <laughs> Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Uh, you shouldn't be surprised at my saying you must be born again or born from above. Nicodemus is like, how can one be born when he's old? And Jesus like kind of switches the metaphors, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, water and yeah. Um, spirit. And and I think we're going to see that throughout the book of John. Um, yeah. yeah, he seems to, on one level, it seems like he's a poor listener because he just starts talking about something else. But then on the other hand, you find out that he actually is answering the question uh, in an incredible way. Yeah. What are your thoughts uh, around water and spirit? Like, does you think Jesus is juxtaposing those, or is he? Is that another way of saying the same thing? It seems to be maybe water represents the natural birth, and spirit represents the spiritual birth. Yeah. Okay. The flesh. Said he's juxtapos juxtaposing those flesh, spirit. A couple chapters later, he, he's at the Feast of Tabernacles, and he says, uh, "Living water is going to pour out of you." Um, and that's the, that's the feast where it commemorates water coming from the rock. Um, in the in the wilderness, Jesus talks about cleansing of water when he heals the blind guy. Yeah, um, he uses a form of water to heal him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't it? We got the pool. Of, yeah, okay. And then he tells yeah. him to wash. He tells him to wash. Which I mean, yeah. that feels like I mean, this whole baptism cleansing. Mm. You know, later on he washes the disciples' feet. Says now you're you're clean. All right. So then he describes um, the life in verse eight of this kind of a person who has this birth. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. I, I think that's one of my favorite like texts that captures you know the movement of the Spirit. It's like the wind, the wind. It's the wind, man. It blows wherever it wants. You know, like it, it, we 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 did a podcast on music a while back, but like mysterious <laughs> ways by you too. You know, it's like it's all right, it's all right. She moves in mysterious ways and. Um, I think it gets back to that, like embracing mystery and uncertainty and letting that be the, the thing that draws you into more and deeper, as opposed to clinging on to the solid, because everything in this that, you know, everything Jesus is using to describe the, the work of God in our lives, the work of God in the world, it's it's not concrete. It's not brick and mortar. It's yeah. fluidity. Fluidity. Yeah. I would have thought that the wind would blow Tim and Lisa into Colorado. Right. Five years ago. Whatever. Right. Or me and Donna moving up here the in, long our, in our old age. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah it's, it, absolutely. Like if, if somebody would have like rolled it back 10 years, like here's, here's yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. Hey, the wind's going to switch directions, by the way. Yeah. What? <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Uh, Nicodemus just says, how can this be? Like, and we don't even know what he's referring to. Is he referring to the wind, the new birth? And then uh, uh, Jesus sort of gets on him here a little bit. Like, you're Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you, you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know. We testify to what we have seen. But, but still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? There's that contrast again, earth, heaven, mm -hmm. above, mm -hmm. below. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Mm -hmm. What the heck is he talking about? He's not, so now he's talking about a snake in the wilderness. So. From the story of the people of God, right? Like they, there's snakes running through their camp and causing all kinds of death and illness. And um, God speaks to Moses like, hey, fashion this, this snake out of bronze and put it on a pole and lift it up. And everybody that looks at it will be made well. Like I said earlier, you know, like the cross looms over this whole account. And this is one like 
he is um, connecting this thing that was lifted high up in the center of the people and was a source of healing and extraction of poison, right? I think to him on a cross, extracting the poison of sin and death from the world. Nicodemus wouldn't have seen it. Nobody would have seen it. Yeah. Um, he would have, uh, to me, he's throwing another 100% mystery out at Nicodemus. Sure. Who would have been very familiar with that snake in the wilderness story. And I'm sure he's kind of like, wait a minute. Okay, you've come from above. You're bringing a new birth. Uh, you're son of man. And, and now, now you're saying you're a snake. Yeah. Uh, on a pole yeah and who i mean being a snake is not exactly a positive biblical metaphor <laughs> no 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 so, which you know like that that's one of the things that, that makes that story uh you know in the time of moses and in the exodus narrative so strange you know it's like it doesn't that that story doesn't by itself doesn't make a lot of sense like, yeah why, it's, why, it's, it's a weird it's, one Unless it's, you know, just kind of like a, a, a wink to the redemptive arc of God, mm -hmm. right? The redemptive narrative of God. Like this yeah. thing that in the beginning caused, I'm going to turn it into a... Yeah. Yeah. Here's Moses a couple thousand years earlier saying, I don't know why I'm making a snake. I'm just doing what the, I'm just yeah. doing what he told me to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. People are dying and it's taking me a, a little bit of time to fashion this snake out of bronze and wrap it around <laughs> this pole. And I don't understand this. Yahweh and whatever. And then uh and then he drops this thing in Nicodemus's lap and he's mm -hmm. probably just like, dude, make some sense. You wonder later on when he uh when he sees the crucifixion if like if the light turns on and yeah. it just busts him open or something, you know. Um, somewhere in that window of time, like I, I gotta yeah. imagine that. He remembered that, and yeah, I would say that's it. beautiful. Of course, that leads us to the famous verse that we see at football games on signs: <laughs> uh, "For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him uh, shall not perish but have eternal life." Just to touch you once again.